Hey, hey. That was an exciting start to the trip. We turned up here yesterday in the helicopter and had a bit of a sleep in this morning actually, didn't we? <laughs> and uh, poked our heads out the door and we seen this young tar, bull. He was uh, miles away to start with, but he came right down over a period of time and ended up in the bluff opposite the hut. Long story short, or long stalk short, we got down right to the creek there and he gave me a, I guessed it a 40 metre shot but it was obviously a wee bit longer. You probably saw on that clip that it rattled his toenails. <laughs> Would have been a sitter for the compound but hems the brakes, good start anyway. So we're here for about a week. Five days, I think. Uh, same areas we hunted last year, actually, this time last year. And already we've noticed a drop in the numbers since the culling operations that took place in here. But that's okay, there's still a few animals about. Let's see how we go for the rest of the week. Hey, Piggy. Oh, what are we doing? Going to find some tar. Yep. So the wind's coming up the creek. We're kind of glass a lot of the country, nothing obvious, but we're going to do a big loop back around and head back up, up high into the wind and just see what's on this side. Um, yeah, as Matt said, the numbers are a wee bit lower, it looks, on, on initial 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 thoughts, but um, we'll go and see. Well, Eugenie, Eugenie's done the damage by the look of it, but there's still a few about, so. We're seeing uh, a few they're obviously still on the move like last year and we're seeing the odd small group just appear from kind of nowhere so hopefully um, we'll see some throughout the day like that ones that are just kind of yeah best bet is probably going to be get somewhere a good vantage point just sit up and wait do a bit of waiting then move and wait and move and see if something comes along yeah feeds and feeds and feeds around but as Matt said they're moving pretty fast the ones we've seen which is the same as last year so just better be in the right place at the right time what's happening Piggy <laughs> um well we've come up done a circuit round um we haven't seen a lot but we have found a mob of looks like mixed age bulls younger bulls um down the creek here there's about what we can count earlier on is probably about 18. Um, we're just trying to see what they're going to do and try and work the wind right and get a stalk on them. So um, we'll see how it pans out. But at the moment, the wind's actually coming up, up, up this face here. We've got to get down off this face and without them seeing us. Um, and then hope that they stay in the riverbed where they are. But they're moving around a bit, so. I want to try and let them settle and see what happens. We can't get any closer to these tar. We're at 75 at the moment, so... <clears throat> Aaron's going to try to get into 40 metres with the compound. The lie of the land is just um, too flat for us to get any closer, so she's hands and knees job under the tussock. See how we go. He's in there somewhere. Oh, there he goes.
he's just picked up his arrow. Not sure whether he's hit it or not, to be honest. No, don't think so. Well, that was rather exciting. He uh, <laughs> managed to stalk down, not that he did it intentionally, but stalked to um, just perfectly in line with the camera and the tar. But um, he's heading back here, so I, I think he's missed it. <laughs> we'll find out in a second. Spit it out. <laughs> good stalk, eh? Yeah. Good fun. Oh, did no, you hit it? Stalk. Well, I thought I did. I got Matt and I talked about it before I left, and my my my, my maximum range of my bow with my pins is 40 metres, and after that I'm kind of guessing a wee bit. So we said if I get to 40, I have to take the shot, and I got to 40, as you saw, hope, and uh, there wasn't a lot of cover left, and there was those two nannies up on the bank. If I had gone much further, I'd run the risk of them spooking. So I was at 40s, so I thought, oh, well, I've got to have a shot now. And it yeah, looks like I fluffed the shot, to be honest. Um, I thought I hit it high, but there's nothing on the arrow at all. So well, maybe I didn't hit it. I've watched the video, and um, well, it's hard to tell on the little LCD screen, but that chamois disappeared into that gut, and I don't think it came out. Ta. Yeah. What did I say, chamois? Chamois, yeah, ta. Yeah, ta. yeah well, I, was, I was trying to pick if it, if it came out or not. You know, sometimes when you hit them, but as the arrow exits, it climbs and it looks like it went over the top. Yeah. I've seen that a couple of times. But I thought perhaps that could have happened, but there's nothing on the arrow. It's clean as a whistle, so oh. must must have gone over the top. But I, was, I swear I hit it. But anyway, it was a good stall. Well, as I came over that we rise, I was, I was focusing on those two nannies on the other side. And they had kids, so I didn't really want to shoot them. Yeah. And uh, as I stood up, there was those ones slightly below me. Yeah, and I'd range there, and that was exactly 40 metres, so I was like, yeah, that'll do. And, um, yeah, waited for it to turn side on, and drew, and yeah. just mucked the shot up. Not enough shooting, eh? Yeah. Not enough hunting. Not enough practice. Mm. We'll go and have a look. Good fun, though. This is the little gut that uh, we thought it may have uh, expired in, but there's no blood, no roll marks, no carcass. I guess the thing to point out is, because um, you just watched that little bit of it, but this started uh, probably about what, four hours ago. Yeah. These tar were down on the riverbed. There was a whole group of them, and um, we were watching them trying to decide how we're going to approach them, and a plane flew over. And obviously, with all the helicopter pressure they've had lately from old mate Eugenie, um, they, they all bolted and they came up this hill. So we sat and we watched them again, they split, the big mob split, and some came back this way, so that's how we ended up stalking these ones. So yeah, it all started way down in the river, um, and ended up up here, so. And then I blew it. All good. All right, Mr. Bory, you, <laughs> you've just had your scrambled eggs on toast and your coffee with uh, whipped cream. Yeah, she's good. What's the plan for the rest of the day? Yeah, well, I'm going to head back up um, around to where I uh, stalked those bulls yesterday. I lost two arrows. Poor shooting again, so I'm not doing too well, but I'm going to go and try and find my arrows. And then I'm going to um, climb up high, back up to the ridge. You might recall last year I... Bit of that um, sheet, what do they call it? Sheet, uh, sheet lightning. Sheet lightning got me. So I'm gonna go back up there, climb up high, and just get up high and have a look. Pretty good views up there, and then hopefully wait till uh, that last hour or so when animals start moving around a lot more, and then I'll work my way back down. So yeah, I think Matt's gonna head upstream through the through the wee gorge here, and um, oh, it just narrows in a wee bit. And we saw quite a few come down onto a feed face. Um, a couple of evenings ago, there was about how many up there, Matt? 
34. 34 on a face. And two mobs. Yeah. So Matt's going to get up there and um, try and put an ambush on those later on this evening. <laughs> Just a footnote, you might note, mention, uh, notice I'm a bit wary at the moment. I've got one of Matt's uh, <laughs> little hats on. So yesterday I was on the ridge in my old favourite cap that I've had for a long time. Got it real windy, eh? Like it was hard to stand up sometimes, it was bloody windy. Stand on a ridge and she just went. And it only went about 10 metres and I thought oh, I'll grab it. And then a second gust came along and it took it way out into the gully. Way below me, so I actually climbed all the way down and spent probably 20 minutes trying to look for it and I couldn't find it. So Matt's kindly lent me one of his buffs to protect me old... Uh, solar panel. Solar panels on top that are gradually getting a wee bit bigger from the sun. So yeah, old explanation. Old Aaron's got a. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, well, I guess you'd call it a re receding hairline. <laughs> oh, I used to weave it. Yep, yep, yep. And proud. And proud. Hard earned, that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep the sun Apparently on. Apparently, if you're, if you're a real man, you have a receding hairline. <laughs> yeah. I um, waited for those three bulls to go around the edge of the spur and quickly raced up to their level to get the wind right. Poked my nose around the corner here where they went over and unfortunately one of them's bedded up down there so I can't make a move until they go out of sight again. The other two are in the gut underneath this one. So she's a waiting game. Oh boy, the bad luck continues. I um, I sat on that tussock face spur over there for about an hour, uh, waiting for this bull on this side here to move, uh, and he finally did. He disappeared down into the gut where the other two were, and so I took the opportunity and literally ran round the face while they're out of sight. And oh, I only needed, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds more to get to the lip of the, the gut. And, uh, but one of them poked its head up when I was still, I don't know, 20 metres away from the edge. If I'd got to the edge, it would have been a, a reasonably easy 20 metre downhill shot. So, yeah, he saw me bolted and um, they just didn't stop coming out the other side so no chance for a shot there <sighs> that there kind of sums up the week so far really oh well lady luck has done an about face and smiled on me she did i uh what happened oh, after those three bulls um I saw a mob on the other side of the valley uh, and knowing the wind was coming down the downstream I dropped right down up the other side halfway up the face and then sided into the wind and um, yeah come over a, a little ridge knowing the, oh they should be there there or thereabouts and sure enough <laughs> They're uncanny the way they pick up your movement, even though it's just the top of your head or something. But there was a nanny and two young ones uh, looking at me. But she must have just picked up a tiny bit of movement because she's still very unsure and started walking up the spur. Uh, I think trying to get a better look. Uh, it was 30 metre shot, and in the strong wind, it actually, um, well, strong wind combined with. 31 inch slow moving arrows with uh, high volume or surface area 5 inch fletches on them <laughs> uh, the wind 
caught it a bit and uh, actually went left but um, did the damage pretty sure it's gone through the kidneys and she ran 50 meters and sat down and expired about 10 minutes later so oh, I'm stoked she's a 10 or 11 year old nanny so I'm stoked with that quite a lot of age on her she's obviously bred a few young ones missed all the helicopters one Eugenie didn't get. <laughs> See the age ring stacked up on her there. Age like that is a trophy in itself. So pretty chuffed to say the least.